traps. Who is your number one quarterback and why? It's CJ Stroud. I mean, everyone thinks that it's Anthony Richardson because I put him at number one in my mock before the combine because I thought he was going to you know, test really well. And there's always that riser. But it's actually Stroud because I think he gives you the best of both worlds in that he has the pocket passing of Bryce Young. He's not quite as creative as Bryce Young, not as athletic as Anthony Richardson, but the ability to thread the needle through tight windows. I think he does that a little better than any of the quarterbacks in this class. Two years, a lot of big games. That Georgia game did have an impact on me that he was able to show his ability to improvise outside of the pocket. He's he's not going to run away from a ton of people, but I don't think Patrick Mahomes or even Justin Herbert like are crazy good runners, but they have enough functional athleticism to just make that edge rusher miss for a split second so they can get the throw off. I think that's what Stroud gives you. Um, he feels like high floor, and because he's relatively young, he's a lot younger than Will Levis. I think there's upside with him as well, that he can only get better, um, maybe work on you know, maybe losing a little bit of weight and getting more athletic. But in terms of just being a pure passer, I think C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in this class. Mm, spicy. I look, I mean, I have like a bias against Ohio State quarterbacks, and I probably should. I mean, I probably <laughs> should. Just, but, like, I get it, though. I get it. I mean, it's just like they don't like they haven't like, you know, and it feels, you know, TBD. Um, but they, they haven't they just haven't worked out at the NFL level. And but I mean, Stroud, I mean, you Stroud, you see it. I'll tell you the one thing about him is like this ball placement is just outrageous. The entire throwing session, putting it exactly mm -hmm. where you need it to be. And then it's juxtaposed with like Anthony Richardson, who looks like a total freak. And is just like, can't hit a guy in the hands five, you know, seven yards away on a quick out. And so Stroud said that too. I think he's like told Stacey Dales, he's like, I'm the ball. He's like, I'm the, I'm the ball placement guy. And you know, that accuracy, like not just, not just throwing the pass where it needs to be, but throwing the pass like into a very specific window that makes it easy for your receivers touch. to catch. That yeah, that goes yeah that that touch goes a long long way. I mean, I think I would still go to Bryce Young first overall, but I, I mean first overall quarter. My would be my top quarterback, but like this is a really tough class because you can find faults and, and concerns with each of them, and, and certainly Bryce Young's build, Katie is like I mean you know for me that's you know that's that's like the it's a it's a fair red flag. Like I'd like him to be a little. I need that second T. I need that second C and thick. That's what I need. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, especially when you look at people like Kyler Murray, and he's got a problem with that too. I agree with uh, traps here with CJ Stroud out of Ohio State, and I hear you will because they haven't really translated out of Ohio into the league. But I was reading a quote: CJ Stroud tells his critics, "I've been the best player in college football." I don't know about all that though. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, like I said, these guys always have to showcase that confidence. I think at the quarterback spot, it's become that type of position. So I don't blame them, but like the Will Levis comment was weird. That comment from Stroud was a little bit strange, but I don't think it's going to like push him down the board or anything. Yep. All right. Dom in the chat says, although I like Stroud because he grew up living at a public, living at a public, his sorry public storage with his mom. Okay. I don't know what we're talking about there, Dominic. We'll go ahead and skip that one. Who are the sleepers that we should keep, keep an eye on uh, heading into pro days and the rest of the draft process? Um, I will kind of go with uh, one player that to me had the most impressive performance, but I want to just see, track how he does. Oh, during... you can skip out too, because like I'm not sitting on like a whole list of sleep traps. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Zach, <laughs> Zach Coots. <laughs> this is not my job. <laughs> Zach Coots from old Zach Coots from Old Dominion uh tested like the most explosive tight end at the combine. He's older. He started at Penn State, was there three years, and then at Old Dominion for two years. Six seven, legitimately six seven, two fifty-five, tested through the roof. And it shows on film that kind of receiver like ability he could add probably five or ten pounds and it would be no problem in terms of you know sapping any of his athleticism i just want to see where he ultimately stacks up in this loaded tight end class to be that size to run that fast to have you know a 40 inch vertical broad jump close to 11 feet like he tested like some of the corners and the wide receivers ten of, um and then 10 yeah absolutely nuts like his combine workout and he came in as like old dominion tight end who's really tall kind of skinny like how's he going to work out and then he was the most athletic tight end there and then uh Darrell Chami from Maryland and I'm listing him he's an obscure name wasn't at the senior bowl or the shrine bowl I think he was at the NFL PA bowl which is kind of like the third in line when it comes to the um all-star games after right. college football season I really like him on film I think he's bendy 
I trust certainly the strength and conditioning program there at Maryland. That's with Deontay Banks, Jacorian Bennett, um, Jalen Duncan, the, the left tackle, also very athletic. I think at the Maryland Pro Day, Darrell Chami is going to kind of insert himself fourth or fifth round range, bendy pass rushing specialist that for some reason is just off the scouting radar. And usually the East West Shrine game, the senior bowl, they do a better job than I do identifying these kind of obscure talents. But if I'm going way out of left field, Darrell Chami from Maryland back in 2020, that COVID year, he was unblockable. It was the shortened season in the big 10, uh, but really was like the best pass rusher in those four or five games for Maryland. Never was able to rekindle that. But the fact that I saw it means that he can do it. That's what I heard a lot this week in India. Um, a lot of other analysts and some scouts were saying that they like to just see it once or twice or for a short stretch from a player. They believe that if they get that guy in the building, deal with their their assistant coaches, um, that they can ultimately get that out of them once they're in the NFL. Uh, but I was going to ask Traps, who is who's the – most i know my answer here this is like just like the most obscure combine blow up prospect that you've that you've covered I mean, for me it's, for me it's like so it's ali marpet um because mm. when he was like coming out it was like people were like watch out for this marpet kid coming out of hobart and he just lit up the combine we were all this is like 2013 maybe god i'm old um but uh yeah i mean like we were just like like that to me like was the, the craziest like out of nowhere left field D3 combine. hobart yeah yeah, I mean Hobart. Like I didn't know. I went to Google Hobart. I remember writing about it. That's how. That's how long ago it was. I wrote about it. Um, <laughs> I'll go way back too, and I'll stick with Maryland. Actually, do you remember Bruce Campbell? Oh yeah, the offensive tackle. Like his film was not very good, and like he looked like a tight end at the combine, and he tested. I don't remember all of his numbers, obviously, but he tested like ridiculously, and that was like the Al Davis Raiders. So they picked him, I think, in the third round. Um, was not a very good football player, but that one was like super obscure where it was like, Oh, who is this Maryland offensive lineman here? That's not very good. And then he tested really well, which to me, it's always crazy. Like the NFL, the scouting departments, they identify the Ali Marpets, the Kyle Duggars from Lenore Ryan, again, coming back to will in the North Carolina area, like everything does. <laughs> um, like that one was pretty obscure too. Like he looked good on film, but it was like, okay, it's D two football. Like how athletic is he really? And then Kyle Duggar had a really good workout and has actually become a good player with the Patriots. 